It's the Orioles on Mass in Friday night. The Orioles and the Texas Rangers. The Orioles got a great pitching performance last night, leading to another shutout win this week. And tonight, looking for more of the same. We welcome you in, everybody. Jeff Arnold here for Ben McDonald in just a moment. So the great starting pitching got started in Philadelphia, and it continued last night with Zach Lowther on the mound. He was money, five scoreless innings, seven strikeouts, which marked a career high, and it continued the trend. John Means started it. Connor Green was the opener. Keegan Aiken was great in his final start of the year, and yesterday it was Zach Lowther's turn. At Ben McDonald, when you, you look at everything, Brandon Hyde talked about general improvements for some of the young starters mm -hmm. over these last couple of outings, and that is exactly what we've seen these last few nights. Welcome in, everybody. Jeff Arnold. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday afternoon. This year, the Orioles have got Cedric Mullins going to the All-Star Game. And when you think about it, two years ago, this is a guy who is down in double-A buoy, trying to figure out how to get back to the major leagues. And what he has done in the two years since has been nothing short of remarkable. Trey Mancini, meanwhile, he is the best story in baseball this year. A guy that battles back from colorectal cancer is back on the field. He's going to be competing in the home run derby. It's going to be super exciting to see both of them in Denver and Ben McDonald. While it has been a lot of ups and downs in the first half for the Orioles this year, you can focus on some of the individual stories. And man, do you have two good ones. Yeah, he was able to do that, Jim Palmer, against an excellent Houston Astros starting lineup, which as we know is the best one in the major leagues. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zach Greinke. He just didn't get a whole lot of run support. Two flyouts for Crawford in the Game. The wind first pitch. A swing and a line drive. It is caught by the shortstop, Urias. And John Meads has done it in Seattle. He has thrown a no hitter as the Orioles take down the Mariners six to nothing. John Means joins the elite ranks of Orioles pitchers who have thrown a no-hitter. It is the first individual no-hitter since Jim Palmer in 1969. The first overall no-hitter since 1991 in Oakland. And today, a day that John Means will never forget, Cinco de Mayo, a no-hitter for Means as the Orioles come rushing out of the dugout, out of the bullpen, Hugs all around, Means has done it. He has thrown a no-hitter against the Seattle Mariners. Mullins hits this one high and deep. Center field at the track. This one is gone. There is history. Cedric Mullins stands alone. The first Oriole ever with a 30-30 season. Sent down, comes back, finishes strong. Mancini pumps it to right. Good win. This one is gone. How about you, Trey Mancini? Tie ball game off of Hendricks. Other 3 2. Valenka hits it down the line. It's a fair ball. It rolls into the corner. Mancini is waved around third. The relay throw won't get there. Pat the bat comes up with an RBI double, and the Orioles with a 1 0 lead. 2 2. Got him! Orioles hang on 6 to 5 in 10 innings. The road losing streak is over. We also have Cedric Mullins in the on deck circle. Just a run in this second inning after the Rangers got two in the first. One and two against Kelvin Gutierrez. Facing the 25 year old Spencer Howard. Native of California. Martin goes, and that is fouled off. San Luis Obispo. That's where Howard is from. And that was originally where the Phillies drafted him out of. Second round pick at Cal Poly. Some of the other alums that are from there. Garrett Olson, Bud Norris, Mike Kruko. Nice big league career, does the Giants broadcast. Of course, the, the wizard, Ozzie Smith. Mm. On the Central California coast. Line through the right side. So Gutierrez gets some sharp contact. Couple of hard hit balls in this inning against Howard. 
And the O's keep it going, turning the lineup card over. Well, I love this approach by Kelvin Gutierrez, too. Spencer Howard had thrown a lot of balls in the outside part to play fastballs and cut fastballs. So he kind of eliminated the ball in, gets a fastball outside part of the play, the nice inside out swing, and this ball is shot out to right field. It's hit so hard to Garcia out there in right field, no way that Richie Martin is going to be able to go first to third, 1-0-1 one, oh, one off the bat. And Garcia's got a big arm out there. 13 outfield assists for him on the year. And you saw the throw that he made the other night when Texas was playing the New York Yankees. He threw a ball 95 yeah. miles an hour from right field to the plate. And you know, he didn't really even get behind that ball and get a whole lot of momentum going. It was all arm strength. Chop foul. And one of the ways where he's tried to help improve his rookie of the year candidacy. You got him, you got Ryan Mountcastle, of course. As Garcia's kind of tailed off a little bit offensively. Now Mountcastle, of course, has been red hot ever since May. Mullins has added tons of value to his Orioles lineup. Got the tying run at second base now. Grounded out to second base his first time up. One to one. I mentioned that he's going for a 30 30 season. Overall, there have been 13 of them by a center fielder in Major League history, four in the American League. Mike Trout was the last one to get there in 2012. Jacoby Ellsbury did it. Grady Sizemore and Jose Cruz. Mullins hits this one high and deep. Center field at the track. This one is gone. There is history. Cedric Mullins stands alone. The first Oriole ever with a 30-30 season.